it's hard to dispute that, especially when you look at the past history of what's gone in our country and when you look at what's out there. Oh, yeah. Now, I have a, I prepared this elaborate uh, speech to make today, and I'll try to stick to it somewhat. I don't want to come across as mechanical. But I do feel it's important to educate. And, and part of that, I put out what is out there that I've found out in the research. So like Derek said, I've, I've been doing this for probably about the last three, four years. And it's mainly looking at the available literature uh, about the history of unethical, non-consensual human experimentation that has gone on in, in our country that many people are aware of, many people are not. And also into what has been defined as psychotronic or cybernetic technology. And these are things that sound real science fiction and are easily discounted by most people because they don't believe this stuff happens. We see it, we see it in science fiction movies. Well, there's more science to this than there is fiction. Most specifically, I've really focused on looking at the history of the covert behavior modification programs, things like MKUltra, and the means that have been put in to achieve what they were going after for their goals. Now, the MKUltra projects, we all, many of us know that you know, these focused on studying how to alter or control human behavior. And this was initially through the use of various psychoactive drugs, hypnosis, and sensory deprivation to create suggestible states so that people could be controlled or given a hypnotic suggestion. The later research focused on how to use electromagnetic radiation to achieve this things like radio frequencies, uh, microwaves, and that these things can alter emotional states and deliver subliminal messages and even messages that can be perceived as audible and all done in a covert manner. Like I said, the main reason I'm here is to help educate the unknowing public. The people that are subjected to this, they know what's going on. It's everybody else that needs to know about this. As Representative Guest alluded to, that there has been attempts at uh, investigation, there has been investigation done at Senate levels, at congressional levels. There's been legislation that's been tried to be passed. None of it is passed. As it currently stands, there are no criminal penalties in our country for performing non-consensual research on human subjects. And this includes the research that's done through most of the agencies. And there's 17 different agencies that have to adhere to what we call the, the common rule or at least parts of it. Many of them are able to opt out of certain provisions of the common rule. And most of these include military and intelligence agencies. We need to enact legislation to protect. That is one step. Will that stop what is going on? Maybe not. But it at least is a start. You know, both Dr. Hall and I have been working with this group for probably about three years, mainly to bring awareness of what's going on. We, we've interviewed hundreds of individuals, and more importantly, we've networked with other scientists, including some DOD scientists like Dr. Robert Duncan uh, and, and other people that have been around much longer than me, much people that are much not more knowledgeable about this than me. Uh, but interviewing well over 600 individuals. We've also reviewed the data that Derek in, was collecting long before I, I had any contact with this group. And when you start looking at all this data, there is a pattern of similarity. Uh, this includes similarities in physical manifestations, auditory phenomenon, and that there appears to be some type of stalking or harassment uh, involved with all of this. Uh, the similarities are they're too often repeated. They're often verbatim between different individuals. Uh, it's too common to suggest that this is occurring by chance. The result is that many of the people, many of the complainants have suffered irreparable psychological distress and financial loss. Uh, it, it's probably apparent that this is a, a program that relies upon psychological torture to harass the individual endlessly, in most cases for years without any end. These are the stories that we have heard. 
The fact that unethical and witty human research has been occurring in our country is well documented. It's been going on over 60 years. This includes things like the Tuskegee syphilis studies. It includes the human radiation experiments of the 50s and 60s. It includes various chemical and biological uh, programs that were, were mass populations were being exposed to uh, biological agents, chemical agents, uh, for the benefit of science. Uh, to think that such experimentation does not still occur today is, is not rational. It continued in the past, even after it was found out. Uh, it, it continued after there was public outcry. You know, the fact that nobody was ever held accountable for any of this, the fact that no legislation was passed, there was no sanctions, no loss of license uh, by any of the, the health care providers that were involved in this, by any of the other agencies, um, this has all created an environment where human experimentation can still occur. Psychotronic technology and psychotronic weaponry, weaponry development is also well documented in the literature, but even less known to the public than the illegal experimentation that's happened. Uh, I think it's of the utmost importance that the public's made aware of the existence of this and that it can affect one's perceptions and their behavior unbeknownst to the individual. Uh, these have been in, admitted to be in development since at least the 1960s in several countries throughout the world. The bulk of the literature comes from the former Soviet Union and from the United States. Uh, there's media reports from 1994 in the Moscow News that reveal that there was a collaborative effort between the United States and the Russians to develop this technology back then and that in uh, September, of, I believe September of 1990, uh, there was even a collaborative agreement signed between the CIA and the KGB. This is information coming from one of the directors of the factories that was manufacturing the technology. Uh, the primary concern in the development of these so-called non-lethal weapons is that the stated intentions of the people developing them is that they wanted to implement their use upon individuals and populations at large for ideological control of the masses or tools of political and social control. Is that what it's being used for? We don't know. We can only surmise. It appears to be using on individuals. You know, one of my concerns is who has access to this technology and are they using it for their own individual means? Um, I do want to provide a, a definition of the term psychotronic for those that are not familiar with that. Uh, you know, most easily stated to be an application of, of an external stimulus, energy, or some force that causes an alteration in the perception, sensation, or thought process of an individual. Uh, a better definition is provided by Lieutenant Colonel Timothy Thomas in his very good article. Uh, it's called The Mind Has No Firewall. It's from the U.S. Army War Quarterly in the spring of 1998, in which he reviews the available literature on psychotronic technologies at that time. And what he, the definition he provides is that uh, these weapons have the ability to take information that is stored, and this is in quotes, information stored in a man's brain, it's sent to a computer, which then reworks it to the level needed to control the man, and the modified information is then reinserted into the brain. This is what they envision. In essence, these weapons interact directly with the human nervous system, and the nervous system becomes analogous to a living computer. And for lack of a better term, that computer can be hacked into. You know, scientists is, uh, that we've already mentioned, people like Delgado and Pew Hart, discovered in the 60s and 70s that uh, electronic stimulation of the brain and subjecting the brain to uh, directed radio frequencies and microwaves uh, can induce any desired emotion that you can experience can also control motor movement. After their direct stimulation through implanting electrodes at that time, study moved on to, can we achieve this in a remote fashion? The results of that literature are not made publicly known. It is known that the research was done. There's been other research that is focused on what is referred to as biological radio communication, and this was referred to in a, me in a memo from uh, CIA Director Richard Helms back in 1964, when they were also aware that the Russians were already researching this. Like I say, this technology has been investigated for a long time. So met these methods of delivering messages directly to the intended target without the target having any mechanical receivers is what we're looking at. 
These messages can be subliminal. They can be perceived uh, only by the subconscious. Uh, they can be perceived as audible without anybody, any other bystanders around being able to perceive them.